everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to show you how to make this really sweet little kind of satchel bag or over the shoulder bag if you put a longer strap on it. It's really fun. There's lots of little techniques that I show you with this one. Lots of detail. I've got the little brads and the D-rings there. This is all magnetic. So this comes down, this comes up and then inside you've got this locking system. So you just slide it apart and then you've got a really nice size little gift bag inside it's strong as well so this will definitely hold you know like a candle something with a little bit more weight onto it because I have reinforced these pieces here by adding the brads lovely bow little tassel there and um, yeah really enjoy this the papers I've used I usually show this in the next section but I forgot to mention it in the tutorial because I've already made this so I'm just doing my little intro for you all uh, but it's using this paper pad here summer dreams and this was from the works and it's beautiful so I did do a quick flick through when I shared that video but just to give you an idea of some of the lovely prints this is one I'm going to use next and that's it doubled up so you get two of each that was so I've used two pieces for this one here and it's that gorgeous print isn't that lovely so fun and fresh um, the other one I really like is the polka dots so this one and that one that's what actually drew me into buying it so three pound I'll share the links below but yeah this is what we're going to make so let me show you okay so you're going to need some ribbon for your handle so I've got this lovely gingham orange pattern there I'm using a Posca pen this is just the 0.7 mil bullet shaped and it's the white just for that faux stitching detail I've got my D rings here these ones I'll go through the measurements for later on everything will be linked below as well this goes perfectly and this was what I had hanging off of my ruler but I thought you know what it's got the bronze metal work there which goes with the D ring and the turquoise goes perfectly with this so I'm using it on this so that's going to get used because it's just been hanging off my ruler for a while not really doing anything so you will need for the actual I guess well the main front and back the case keep them there because I'll go through those little fiddly bits in a moment so you want two pieces that are seven by nine so I've already cut this one so I'll pop that to one side and you want to score along the short side so ooh, along the seven inch side you want to score at half an inch and at six and a half and then rotate and you're going to score at three if you've got um, directional paper make sure this three inch score line is at the bottom so you want your pattern to be facing this way so that's that three inch score line for me because this is my base and those two score lines are going to be on the side okay so this is kind of not really directional because I guess that could be that way up so yeah just take that into account so two pieces and score like that then you want two pieces for the side and these measure three by 12. And along the 12 inch side, you want to score at two and eight, okay? The two inch is gonna be the base. This score line here is what's gonna go inside. We're gonna cut a little slot there. Let me just fold this one as well and burnish. And that's gonna be the closure. Now you don't have to have, so that's gonna be like that. And they're gonna just, kind of sit over each other by an inch and lock in. That's if you want to have that kind of closure on top. If you don't want that, all you will need is two pieces of three by eight and just score at two, so ignore that piece there. You may want the bag to just be completely open and you can just you know, pop tissue in there or wrap the gift again separately. So that's, you can change that if you want to. Then for the lid, you want a piece that's six by nine. It may come up shorter I need to see but I think it will be that from what I've when I've been roughly putting it together along the nine inch side you just want to score at one inch okay so I'm going to fold and burnish that piece there then we want this piece to go on top but you don't want to I've got the default 12 inch length because this is from that paper pack which I'll show you in a moment but the width is five inches because it's going to sit from that score line on that lid piece so you've got this border, but until we cut the kind of curve shape or circular, depending on what you have, I don't really want to cut that yet until I'm 100% sure. So just have it at 12 for the moment. And then I've got this piece here, which is going to be for the, the kind of closure, the strap piece that comes up from the bottom. And this is nine and a half by, it was the scrap width. So mine is coming in at one and three eighths, but one and a half will be fine. Again, that length will be cut down, but I didn't want to cut it too short until I've actually started to put it together. Then I've just got these little ovals, which are going to go on the 
top, they're going to cover like that. So we're going to have a magnet in between, we're going to have a magnet here and that's going to cover the magnet. You can put decorative paper on there as well and it's going to come up like that. Okay, again it will make more sense when we do it, but if you do want something similar, then my largest oval is two inches and the smallest one was the next size down and that's one and a half. Then you want two pieces to connect your ribbon to the D-ring. Now, depending on what size D-ring you have, your width here may be different to mine. This comes in at three quarters of an inch, so I'm cutting my card to five eighths of an inch. I don't want it exactly the same because it will just puck, um, pucker, it will buckle. So now you can see when I put that through, it sits nicely within that D-ring. So look at the width of whatever your D-ring is and just bring it in slightly less than that. So like I said, that was three quarters of an inch, so I've done five eighths of an inch in width and then the length is two inches. So that will go through like so. We're gonna stick that together and then connect it onto the side of our bag and then the ribbon will go through that. Okay, so that's all the scoring and everything explained. So we'll go back to our front and back. So you just want to fold and burnish your score lines. Okay, and then we're just going to do a quick little bit of cutting. So I've already done that one there. So you've got that score line here, which was the three inch score line. And then you'll have those two half inch score lines. Along the bottom here, you just want to cut up the two half inch ones on either side, just to that first score line. Okay, and then just cut that straight. We may cut a little wedge off of it, but for the minute, I think I'm just going to keep them straight. And then again, cut up this one here. Try and remove the score line, just to keep it all concealed when we go to stick the base down. And then remove that one there. Okay, so you'll do that on both pieces. And then that's it. Everything now is about us putting it all together. So grab your side pieces, all right, these odd looking pieces. So yours might be shorter if you decided not to do that extra piece that I mentioned earlier. Now the two inch piece at the bottom is the base, okay? So although they don't line up here, that doesn't matter because you're not gonna see it. So what we're gonna be doing is sticking this over this one. So this side, this half inch piece here will sit within that two inch score line up to that top score line or to the edge of your card, like I said, if you don't have that piece. So it's gonna sit, because I'm having the pattern paper so that you can see it. If you don't want to have it seen, then you're just going to stick it behind like that. See, now I do that, I think, do I actually want it hidden instead? No, I'm going to have it exposed. It's entirely up to you. I'll let you decide on that. You may want to have it inside or out. I always change them up. All my gift bags are so different. So, yeah, I might do this again another time and, this, and have it <laughs> hidden instead. But I'm going to keep mine exposed. So I'm going to pop my tape behind if you're going to have it stuck behind this orange piece then you want to put your tape on the front so it's entirely due I would also say if you are going to put it behind then you will want to just take little wedges off of the ends here because you don't want it to be seen so like I said because mine is staying exposed I don't want to my to the sides although it does look nice as a decorative feature as well so again lots of ways for you to really make this your own I'm just giving you my suggestions and my way of doing it so I'm going to take the backing off of there make sure you've got the largest fold at the top and just line it up with that bottom score line and it should just marry up nicely with the top and just make sure that's all stuck down and then just go to fold it around and fold it again. Okay, so that's going to be going inside, that's our base, that one's going to go over the top and then this will come in and we will cut that when we get to it. But yeah, no, I think I like it that side. I think because that hand, because that's going to come down, yeah, it's nice to have that little bit poking through the sides. Okay, so that's that one. Then you want to do the same with the other one and then we'll put them all together in a moment. So this is the second one. So again, I'm just going to flip it over and pop some red tape along here. You don't have to use red tape. I've just, it was just what I've got at hand. You can use obviously your liquid glues, double-sided tape. It's up to you. Again, focusing on that two inch score line at the bottom. Cool. 
Next we want to stick it all together. So now we're going to stick that one over that one because obviously I'm having mine all exposed but otherwise you will have yours that way if you are hiding it. So again I'm going to pop some tape on this one. And then that last one, I'm just running again, two more strips on here. Okay, fold it all in half and it should line up perfectly with that score line. You might have to manipulate it a little bit and then just fold that over like so. And then when it all comes up, so the two short pieces will go in or I'll probably put, no actually because we're going to have the buckle piece coming out so I'm going to have my front go down first which is unusual because usually I don't. Then I'm going to have these pieces going in and then the last one will come up because we're going to be sticking this in because that's our bottom tab and that's going to come up like this, our closure. So what I might do actually, which I should have said before but it's still easy to do now, is just take wedges off of the bottom which I always do, but I think because these are a slightly different shape, I just forgot. So I'm just taking quite a nice chunk off there because once you once it goes in, you don't want to be able to see it. So see now when I close that, whereas if I leave that one in and put that over, can you see you get the orange poking out? Whereas here it's completely concealed. Okay, so again, sometimes all you need to do is remove maybe a score line that you might see, but I always like to take, if I know it's completely being hidden, I take a nice wedge off of it. And that way, yeah, it's completely disappeared. Okay, so now, yeah, that's all going to go in and then that's going to come up. It's completely hidden. And then before we stick it all down, we're going to stick that in once we've decided on what length we want it. And then we're going to have these and the magnet and it should all come together nicely. So this is going to go in like this just to conceal what was in there because you maybe you didn't want it kind of falling around and stuff. But what you want to do is sit it completely flat over the top and then I'm going to grab a pencil and just do a pencil line there. We can rub this all out in a minute because we can lie it down flat. Okay, so you've got that pencil mark and then overlap it the other side and do a pencil mark. Again, this will all get rubbed out in a moment. Okay, and then halfway from here you want to do another mark at half an inch so if you want to go like that and and then at one inch not half an inch do a pencil mark and again do a pencil mark and just join that up do it lightly because again you, this will all get rubbed out like so and again on this one so we've already got that one so again just coming in with my ruler like so. And then you're going to cut down one of them from this side to the middle and then this one we will cut from this end to the middle So, or vice versa. So I'm going to start with this one, I'm just going to cut up and just go just up to the middle and slightly past a little bit. Okay, It doesn't matter if you go too far, it really isn't going to matter and then because that's going to lock into that one but we now we need to flip it around and cut up that next one. You're not cutting anything on that first line, that was just to help you line everything else up. So again just come down like so and now you'll be able to lock it together. And if they don't line up like that then I haven't cut down far enough so I just need to take it out and just cut further down again like so. Now you have that sealed. It looks quite nice, almost looks like a little bow. Okay, so again, just take that off. Now I can flip it over and just carefully rub out those pencil marks. And if you want to add decorative paper over this as well, you can. There's no reason why you have to keep it plain. So if you have made a mistake or you feel you've cut it too much or you're not happy with it, you can cut it right off. Like I said, you don't even have to have this piece on. But I do like to show you ways to, yeah, add all those little extras on if you want. So we're not sealing it together. It might be, you know, easier to do that as well, flat. But I'm just trying to show you all the stages. So that's what you should have and this will be open for the minute. 
Then we've got our lid and this is going to stick to the back. It's going to come over like this. But what now we need to decide is what, how you're going to shape the bottom. Now, if you've got nothing to shape it at all, don't worry. You don't have to do that. You can keep it straight. You can maybe just round off the corners. Maybe you've got a corner punch or your envelope punch board. You can use that to always do something nice. You might want to just get some more decorative paper and do a couple of little triangles or get some mirrored cardstock and decorate it that way. So don't worry if you don't have that because that's going to sit like this. And then this is obviously going to go over the top and come down as well. So what I'm going to do is find my oval dies. Okay, I'm going to use these because I think they've got quite a nice, just subtle kind of slope. There's no um, huge, like, you know, it's not a circle. That's probably the easiest way to say. So basically, if any of you are thinking, what are you talking about, Sam? This is what we're going to do. I want there to be just a slight shape. So I'm going to use this just to draw around and then cut it. And then I'll do the same with that one there. So, I mean, I've got my x cut circle cutter you could position it and you could cut you'd have to come out a little bit further but that'll give you a more defined shape so let's just have a little look so that yeah so you could do the circle you have to line it up in the center like I kind of have there and then you can cut and you'll have more of a deeper shape but I want to go for just a, a subtle style so this is why I didn't want to cut anything yet because you may decide that you want to have your flap a lot shorter because if I stick that down obviously you're going to create an arch going over there but that comes quite far down but once I take probably about an inch off it's going to bring it up a bit so this is you know you kind of have to decide this bit yourself because I'm you know not everybody's going to have these dies and you know you're going to do it differently so I am going to line up this on here because I do want to keep things obviously nice and straight and then I'm going to line up this so it is, I'm going to come up an inch, so this is one inch here. And I just want to make sure that this kind of overhangs here the same as it overhangs here. So it's coming up a little bit more on that side, so I'm just going to pull it over. Because it's an oval, you do have to kind of play around a bit, but I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to grab my pencil. Now I could die cut this as well and just die cut a partial part by just putting your plates over the part you want to cut but I'm just going to do it this way because it's easy for everyone to follow. So now I've got that. So now I'm going to very carefully just cut along that. Cutting slightly above it, so I'm just removing it. Obviously you can rub it out, but I'm being lazy. So now when I imagine that's stuck there and bring it over, see it's coming up higher, but that still looks really nice. Then I'm going to lay this over the top. Now it's only going to come down from the score line. It's going to start there. You can decorate the back piece again if you want. You want to make sure, again I'm using my mat here just to keep everything straight. So mine is, this is five inches and this is six so I want to make sure I've got half an inch on each side there. And then I'm going to flip it all over and I'm going to trace around this side here like so, and then cut that one. So whatever shape you're doing, you just want to do the same as what I'm doing here with that shape. So the process is exactly the same, you'll just be working with a slightly probably different measurement and shape than I am, like so. So now, again, go back to the front, and that should sit perfectly, yay, which it does. Now what I might also do is come up a little bit higher so I have a border I don't know whether to have that same half inch. See if I bring it up now and just cut straight along there. So I've got that same half inch border. I quite like that actually. Kind of breaks it up. If I put it over the front there, you can really see the lid. Rather than having it right down, it kind of then disappears. So if I bring it up, I think it really defines the lid. So I'm going to do that. So again, I'm just showing you the process, how I work and you know alter things to yeah, just so they work better. I'm not happy with that there, so I'm just going to trim that a little bit more. It's better. And it's going to get slightly covered by that clasp that's going to wrap around the front. So I'm going to bring that up there. And then I'm going to line my ruler up with that score line. And then just draw a pencil line. And I'm just going to quickly trim that one. So now, yeah, 
I really like that. I think that looks cool. Now, before I stick it down, I want to stick my magnet down. So, you know when you lose magnets? There we go, I've got one. <laughs> we will stick the other one last when we add our clasp. So I'm going to have it quite far down. Grab my glue dots. Okay, these are really thick glue dots, so they cover the whole bottom of the magnet, which is what I like. And whenever you're adding glue dots, just rub over the backing until it goes white. So I'm just scratching over it there with my nail. You can use a ruler or anything, and that means it's completely transferred and stuck onto whatever it is you're sticking it to. It comes off really easily. So again, what I might do is stick it onto this piece, actually. No, yes. <laughs> like that there we go and then I can make sure then I'm going to get it all covered okay I wasn't happy where I positioned it so I'm just getting rid of that and I'm going to do another one I want it a bit higher actually because I just put the little strap on and I think it's going to be better having it a little bit higher because I want the ovals to sit nicely on the lid so again just take that one off so I'm going to come up, so I'm just imagining when that comes up and you're going to have those there covering it because that's going to have the other magnet concealed. So yeah, I'm going to use that flower there as my guide and stick it there. So I have ended up coming up one and a half inches, okay, and just make sure you've got it in the middle, which I think I have, two and a bit. Two and a bit, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I can live with that, that's fine. So then I'm gonna stick another glue dot on the reverse side. Before I stick it down, I do want to just curve this whole piece. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my bone folder and just kind of a nice natural curve in it like so okay and again the same with this okay and that's just going to all sit much nicer and then I'm just going to stick that down I'm going to use my Kalau because this dries really really um, nice and stiff so it just strengthens your gift bag but I'm down to the last little bit I think my order should be coming today actually so I should get enough out Okay, so now I've got mine arched, I just need to kind of work along with that. Make sure you get it nice and centred. And then I'm going to squash it down a minute just to make sure this sticks nice and flat. Now these magnets are nice and flat as well, so you don't get too much bulk. And just as that glue's kind of setting, I'm going to keep it in that arched kind of shape. And now, when that goes on there and comes around, how cool is that? That's why I don't, again, didn't want to cut anything because now we can decide and measure where we're going to have that piece. So I'm going to stick this one down. So, again, decide if you've got a front or back because we haven't stuck the base yet, so you can still decide if you've got a print, although a lot of it's going to be kind of covered. I'm going to go for this one. So you just want to line up that score line with the back of the bag. If you lie it down, open it all up. There we go. So now that will again close. That lid feels really strong. I love how it just drops down and I've got that nice, nice look to it. Like that. I think it looks really, really cool. I love how this is coming together. So next, I'm going to stick this in now. So I'm going to just change that. So this one is going to go down first. These are then going to go in. So we can get these pieces stuck down. It's the very, very last one that you don't want to. So I'm just going to add, I'm really get in the last bit of this glue because it's brilliant. Okay, so next I'm going to prepare the end of this piece. So we want to grab our other magnet and what you want to make sure is that you've got it in the right order. So it will find, see, it's just clipped into where it needed to go. So, you know, 
it will find, let the magnet, there you go, it's really, really strong, find where it needs to go. So I know that I need to stick down that way up. So now, yeah, and then it will sandwich in between. So just make sure you get the right order of your magnet because if you stick them back to front, then obviously they won't attach to each other. Okay, so I've just stuck my glue dot on the right side there. And then I want to stick it in the center of this larger die. And again, they're so strong, even with the glue dot between them. And then that is going to stick just on top. I don't want to squash it all around. I want it to look like it's just raised on maybe like a foam adhesive. So if I bring it up to you, you can see. So if you look to the side, you would see the magnet, but I'm, I'm really not bothered about that. You could put a flower over the top to decorate it, so I may well do that. So I'm just putting another glue dot on that opposite side. And then you just want to make sure that you get that lined up in the middle, like that. So yeah, I can still decorate that with something again if I want to, but now that sticks or attaches really well. It's slightly, it's ever so slightly off center. Or was that just me? I think it's just a smidge that way, but hey ho. So now that is gonna stick on the back, so it will kind of take away a little bit of the strength of the magnet, but it's still really strong. So I'm going to, again, use the end of this glue, which has gone all horrid now, but it's still going to work. I'm just going to spread out the last of that <laughs> and then stick that over the top. And let that stick down and then pull it down as much as you can and just kind of fold along there. I can then snip off that much and that's what's going to stick. That's going to come up and it will now be wedged in between there like so. And I think I might put a decorative strip of pattern paper because I can hook it underneath there all the way down as well. So just play around if you want to decorate that a little bit more. There we go, that's just perfect. That's one inch, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get that glue out anymore now. So I'm going to, so hopefully this tutorial I've given you a lot more ideas because you know I, I kind of I've done this tutorial as I've made it from scratch, so it just gives you an idea of how I kind of work things out and think things up. So, because I don't always need two of everything, so <laughs> just going to carefully stick that along there. I like that I've got that pattern there right in the middle as well, and then I'm just going to just follow that around the fold like so, and then I'm going to add some glue all on the back of this. This is the Tombow Tacky Glue, which is another favourite of mine, super sticky. Make sure you keep it on the magnet when you stick it down. I'm going to manipulate it slightly over that way, so at least this is in the centre, but that, that's, like I said, a little bit off, but I still think it looks so cute. And then you just want to add glue either all on the bottom there or all on this. I'm going to add it onto this piece. And I can just open that up and just go inside there and make sure that's all stuck down. Okay, so now we just need to attach our side pieces. I mean, you can have it like that if you want more of a gift box bag kind of style. I think it looks lovely. So next we need those tiny little pieces, which are here and here, and your D-rings. So you want to... First of all, just put a little, just curl them with your bone folder, like so. Pop them through the D-ring and then you're going to stick them together. Okay, so again, I'm just going to grab some of my glue. Okay, and now we're going to stick these onto the side. So I like to stick it so that the D-ring almost falls inside there. Depending on how you've made the bag, also if you don't have those pieces going in, then you might want to stick this inside. But I'm going to stick this, I'm then going to punch a hole through with my poker tool and then I'm going to add a brad just for some extra strength. Okay, so, because if you are putting something a little bit heavier in this, then you will want to obviously guarantee that that's not going to just fall apart. So I'm just sitting that just so it's in the middle here. Because these are half an inch, so that's half, well, no, that's five-eighths, wasn't it? But 
you want to make sure you've just got a nice even border there. It's about, about right. And then do this one here. This one's just going to go on display in my craft room for a while anyway. That's usually what happens. And then if I need a gift bag, I then use it. And then, yeah, something else will then be replaced. Okay, so that's like that. And I've got an array of brads here, but I want something that's going to stick within that kind of bronzed copper colour. I don't want to go away from that. Or I'm going to go colourful, so I may well do... Ah, that orange. There we go, that'll go perfect. So I've got that one, and there's another one. Okay, and then just open it up. And just very carefully, obviously watch your fingers, but I'm going to just poke through that, and then go through with my brad. Like so. And just split that inside. That colour match is perfect. And that will just guarantee strength with that there. And you can always cover that if you want with a piece of pattern paper. So again, on this side here. You know, when you watch this and then decide to make it, you might want to do all this, you know, when it's flat. There's no reason why you can't put these on when they're flat. So again, you know, it might be a bit easier if you want to put a little um, foam mat underneath and then you can use your poker tool to poke into that so and then those ones okay so that's that all in place close all that up and then I've got my ribbon so it's up to you how long you want to have it I'm going to pop it through like that I love the gingham against the flower print I think it looks really good and then I'm going to go through this one I'm going to kind of do it like my flap over lid one I think I've done so I'm going to do a bow kind of bring the two together so you can have it longer or shorter so you can have it with the double strap or you can have the strap across like that so it's entirely up to you so I'm going to do the two of them together and then I'm going to do a knot like so and then I'm going to put one through and then I can tie a bow Okay, so I finished my bow, you can see there, and I've just sealed the edges with a light edge just so it doesn't fray anymore. And I've got my tassel there as well. It all looks really, really cute. And then I'm just going to finish it off. This is completely optional. This is that pen I mentioned before. And I'm going to do some faux stitching around, probably maybe should have done this at the beginning. Let's just fold that back there. You want to make sure, test it first, because these you do need to really shake. And just make sure that you get a really nice opaque white coming through because if it looks a bit um, diluted or transparent, let it dry for a minute. If it disappears into the, the cardstock, then you haven't, sh you know, you need to shake this more. But that looks like that's going to be fine. So I'm going to go around here and just very carefully do some stitching. There you go, there's my faux stitch and I really like it. I think I still want to do something with this. I did die cut a slightly bigger one. And look, if I put a larger one there, do you not think that looks a bit better? You'll see if I change my mind in the photos anyway. So yeah, so that's what we've done. I've got my Posca pen there. Make sure you shake it with the lid on because I took the lid off and shook it and it flicked out on my finger. So, but yeah, really, I do recommend these. They're great. So there you have it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed my little satchel gift bag here. I think it's really fun. There's lots of little kind of techniques and tips along the way. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.